Understanding what the browser does with our JavaScript code is very important. It gives us a tremendous understanding as web developers to really get under the hood and discover what happens with our JavaScript. So very briefly, all languages, no matter what programming language it is, is in a human readable format. This is the syntax of the language. This is for us, the programmers. However, your computer doesn't understand this. It understands machine code, or what we know as ones and zeros. So now let's understand the browser a little more. With each application that you have, most of the time it's made up of lots of little different applications that control certain aspects of the program. It looks like one program, but it's actually made up of many different programs. So, for example, the browser has three main programs that we're interested in. The first program is the DOM parser, and this takes our HTML code and it converts it into a structured page that we visually see. The next program is the CSS parser that will take our CSS code and then it will make sure that our document layout is rendered correctly. But truth be told, even though we have the HTML and CSS syntax being parsed here, we actually combine these two together. We have something called the layout engine or rendering engine inside of a browser, which is actually just classed as one program. And it takes both your HTML, CSS, and it does other things inside the browser as well. And ultimately it renders the page as seen here. And then finally, we have another little mini program called the JavaScript engine. Now this JavaScript engine program can go by different names in different browsers, but they're just code names. They're just names for the JavaScript engine of that browser. For example, Firefox has SpiderMonkey, Google Chrome has the V8 engine, Safari has Nitro, and IE has Chikara. So it doesn't matter what name we give our JavaScript engine. Its sole job is to take the JavaScript syntax that's in human readable form and convert it ultimately into machine code or ones and noughts so that our computer can understand our instructions. So this is why we call it client side because the files are being downloaded onto the client's computer and processed on the client's computer. Now, if we take a look at the JavaScript engine specifically, this is actually either going to be an interpreter or it's going to have compilation involved in there, such as a JIT compiler. For example, Google's V8 engine. And in fact, a lot of JavaScript engines are JIT compilers. And what JIT means is just in time. And what that means is it takes your human readable instructions, whatever instructions you want to execute at that specific time, and it basically converts those instructions. And they're actually very, very quick. They also do some optimizations as well. Now I've made a course on interpreters, compilers, JIT compilers, and so forth in my free programming 101 course, which I definitely recommend you check out that video. Please do note though, however, that when the user downloads your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, they are in human readable format. So anybody can look at the source code. However, this is the whole point of the web, that it's open, it's flexible, and it's expandable. So there's no way of actually stopping somebody from looking at the source code. And to be honest with you, I've learned a lot by looking at other people's source code. So by the web being so open, it's very transparent, and it works very well. So help out other developers too.